This video does not take the place of installation instructions, but helps to illustrate the installation. Warning, when installing electrical power system accessories, failure to follow applicable personal safety requirements and written installation instructions could result in fire or explosion and serious or fatal injuries. Train and rack the cables into their final position. Cables need at least a 32 inch overlap. Clear all jackets and the working area of foreign materials and pulling lubricants. Mark cables at the center line of the splice. The center line of the splice will be the midpoint of the overlapping cables. Note, the following steps result in neutral wire length sufficient to continue externally over the splice jacketing sleeve. Refer to table two in the installation instructions and mark and ring cut the cable jacket A inches from the center line of the splice and remove the jacket on each cable to this mark. Abrade the cables six inches back from the jacket cutback. Using an approved solvent, clean the cable jacket for 30 inches on the side where the splice body will be placed. Wrap one strip of gray mastic around the cable jacket, one and one half inches from the jacket cutback. Do not stretch the mastic. Lay the concentric neutrals back along the cable and press into the mastic. Use caution in not allowing any contaminants to stick to the mastic. Using PVC tape, temporarily tape down the concentric neutral ends to prevent damage to the core splice body. Repeat for the other side of the splice. Cut the cables at the center line. Remove the cable semicon as shown in the table in step two of the installation instructions. Remove the insulation according to the charts listed in the installation instructions. Slide the splice body over the cable end so that the release strip of the spiral holdout points toward the cable end. Before shearing the bolts, Confirm that the dimension between the semicon cutbacks matches the table on page 5 of the installation instructions for the particular joint you're installing. Insert the conductors so that the insulation butts up with the end of the connector. Hand tighten the shear bolts so that the connector stays in place. Follow the tightening sequence as shown in the drawing in step five of the installation instructions. The Tyco electronics battery operated impact wrench may also be used. File smooth any remaining part of the shear bolt that remains higher than the connector. Abrade the insulation, then clean the insulation using an approved solvent.
for compression connector, confirm that the dimension between the semicon cutbacks matches the table on page 6 of the installation instructions for the particular joint you are installing. Confirm that the distance between the insulation cutback with the connector crimped will not be more than 6 inches in any case. After the installation, deburr the connector if necessary, abrade the insulation, and then clean the insulation using an approved solvent. Clean and degrease the connector. Refer to the chart in the installation instructions for installing the conductive patch. If you are unable to measure the connector diameter, the patch must be installed on any connector smaller in diameter than the cable insulation diameter. The conductive patch will be applied to increase the diameter of smaller OD connectors to match the cable insulation diameter. Stretch the conductive patch two-thirds of the width. Center and wrap the conductive patch around the connector. It is not necessary to fill all the voids around the connector. The diameter of the conductive patch should not be greater than the insulation diameter. Cut away any excess 